Welcome to New in the Mail, the most popular segment hosted here on the channel. It's been quite a while since the last in the mail, so a lot of interesting stuff has been gathering in my special bin. I'm gonna start the video with uh, this a lithium-ion battery charger and if you remember this cheap cordless drill which I reviewed in Vollog 285 maybe you can remember that it had this pretty low-cost battery charger which I sent to the Diodes Gone Wild YouTube channel for a teardown so ever since then I've been uh, charging uh, the battery packs with one of my bench power supply units which is not very convenient because uh, it's not very portable it's not a very portable setup uh, to charge it with the uh, bench power supply so i've started searching on aliexpress for a little more uh, quality in one of these adapters and after many searches um, i found this model which doesn't have any indication of uh, being higher quality other than being different and slightly more expensive than the other listings so i said why not let's give this a try because i couldn't find anything better so we'll do a quick teardown to see how it's built maybe this turns out to be better so i can also recommend it to other people looking for something similar so this is 21 volts rated obviously intended to charge uh, these uh, 5s packs and it has a rating of 2 amps so it's pretty much 1c charging rate for or slightly lower if you have 2.5 to 3 amp hour cells inside there are no screws on this uh, unit the cable feels okay i guess it's pretty standard pvc cable and it also has some uh, markings on the cable it says 22 awg 2464 type for the cable it's not very light but not heavy enough to immediately inspire confidence either so we need to open it up and uh, let me just try it with a spudger and i'll be right back so it did put up a little bit of fight when opening it up but not too much it's not ultrasonically welded we can see that it probably had like a touch of super glue on this inner rim to hold the cap on it's not like it was going to accidentally come off but uh, it wasn't too difficult to remove either and a couple of uh, things that i notice immediately uh, there seems to be good thickness on the output wires it seems that they have used celastic uh, to keep this output uh, inductor uh, filtering device in its place and also here on the um, common mode input filtering and uh, i spot like an input fuse yep so it's 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 looking good so far but let me try to remove this uh, pcb for a better look this video is sponsored by pcbway.com a professional pcb manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times you can get more than pcbs manufactured with pcbway they also do pcb assembly injection molding 3d printing machining various parts so you can have an entire prototype built using their services check out their website linked below pretty happy with uh, what i'm seeing here i mean it, it it's certainly not a a uh, high quality uh, AC to DC adapter that you might find from a uh, good or known brand name but it's certainly uh, above average uh, when compared to other stuff that we've seen from Aliexpress and I wouldn't have any uh, problems with using these now to charge my battery pack so let me tell you a couple of the things that we have in here that are missing from a typical adapter that you get from Aliexpress. So we have input fuse protection plus, plus a varistor. That's a nice thing. We have an input uh, filter, a common mode choke. That's also on the plus side, something which you don't typically uh, see. On the output, we have some nice strain relief. Uh, the uh, output wiring seems to have the mentioned uh, thickness we have an output filter once again something that you typically do not see on these uh, cheap adapters on the back side of the pcb we have good clearance between primary and secondary plus an isolation slot to increase the creepage distance there are at least 4.5 uh, millimeter of distance between the primary and secondary we have uh, two y-class capacitors uh, across the uh, primary and the uh, secondary of the transformer for noise suppression uh, the caps are like a no-name brand asia x you would expect that but they are 105 degrees c rated and the uh, transformer at least from the outside looks f to be a fairly decent build so i would say this is uh, definitely worth the uh, price i paid for it 
and I'm pretty happy with what I got so I can recommend uh, getting one of these if you're looking for uh, one of these uh, barrel jack chargers for 5S packs. You'll find the link for this in the description of the video. My next item is yet another power supply unit. This time it's one that has all of the regulatory uh, approvals and it should be of higher quality uh, coming from Meanwell. This is a 12 volt uh, 2 amp power supply so that's 24 watts total max. The model number is HDR-30-12 and the main feature of this is that it's uh, DIN rail mountable and I plan to use this at some point to further expand my home automation uh, projects with some solenoid valve controls. I've ordered this mainly to evaluate the quality of such a power supply. I haven't yet decided if I should go for 12 volts or 24 volts also depending on the type of valve that I will be using but generally speaking 24 volts would be nicer because I could transfer energy more efficiently over the wires that I'll be using. This is DC output so again depending on the type of solenoid valve some might require AC power so I might need a different uh, power supply for that but when I bought this I was really thinking of using it with my server project which uh, needs DC power. Either way it's going to be a useful power supply to keep around and let me just uh, quickly open this up so we can take a peek inside. And as expected, this thing looks really nice inside. Look at the uh, clearance between the primary side and the secondary side. Uh, the uh, output caps are from Nippon Chemicon. Uh, the input uh, cap is uh, Lilon brand, which is more on the low quality side, but it's going to survive just fine. We got all of the protection and filtering features that you could wish. We got an input fuse, a varistor, and uh, NTC to limit uh, inrush current. Uh, we have output uh, uh, filtering inductor and capacitor. So the transformer looks nice. So yeah, nothing to, to complain about this power supply, but that's to be expected from a manufacturer like Meanwell, who really does all of these tests to their power supplies. Also in the DINRAIL department, I will show you this uh, one unit enclosure which can be pretty useful if you plan to build like a very small uh, DIN rail mountable project. We'll see if I ever get to design the project I need this for, but I can share a few details for now. So the problem I have is that commercially available DIN rail ring bells typically sound very loud and they have a pretty basic old ring bell sound. Ideally, I would like a more modern sound coming from the ring bell and more importantly, I would like the ability to remotely turn that off or change the output level from my home automation settings based on maybe some profiles that I set. So I said, why not build an ESP32 smart uh, sound uh, buzzer, which uh, shouldn't be too complicated to do. It should even fit just nicely inside this enclosure with power supply included. But I'm a bit busy with my professional work right now, so I don't know when I'll get to design that circuit. But as always, you will find links for all of these items in the description below the video. Also in the DIN rail department, I will show you this uh, DIN rail uh, fuse mount, which is intended to carry a 5 by 20 millimeter fuse in this compartment. It provides you with two terminals in and out and uh, you would use this to protect like a lower current circuit, uh, maybe a doorbell, a relay which is inside your distribution panel uh, with maybe like a one amp fuse. I already have something similar installed in my fuse box but the problem with the ones that I already have is that they have this kind of uh, a hinge mechanism and the, the fuse because of that the fuse itself is not accessible unless I remove the entire front panel of the fuse box and it just doesn't allow accessing the fuse through the uh, small opening on the front so I was looking for something similar and I found this which uh, has uh, these nice uh, way of inserting the fuse and it even has an LED to signal its state status so I think this is a pretty nice uh, find now the only concern with this is that it doesn't seem to have the regulatory approvals uh, necessary for installment in the EU. I mean all that says it's this uh, IEC standard here uh, but I'm pretty sure this is not sufficient uh, for it being installed in the EU. Next up I wanted to try some different uh, solder pastes and um, I ordered these two. This is uh, some uh, uh, lead free paste. This is 1042 bismuth 58 alloy which is supposed to be lower temp at just 
138 degrees Celsius and uh, this brand is practically a no-name brand I've never heard of them before but I'll give this a try nonetheless and I also got this uh, Real Life RL403 uh, paste uh, this is the more typical like uh, tin 63 lead 37 183 degrees Celsius no clean paste I bought this to try it out because the uh, mechanic uh, paste uh, which I tend to use for my prototypes is harder and harder to find and more expensive on Aliexpress so uh, it's interesting how uh, adding that bismuth content into the lead free paste lowers the melting point uh, at just 138 degrees Celsius Next up I got a couple of USB products. This on the right is a USB type C to USB type A adapter. Pretty basic one. I got this from Baseus because they're a reliable brand which I like a lot because they have very good price to quality ratio. And this is useful for those situations where a friend with an Apple MacBook laptop comes over and he only has USB type C ports but he wants to connect something which has USB type A for those kinds of situations. Next, I got this USB extension lead. This is USB 2.0 only. It's half a meter long and was part of a collection of these I ordered a couple of months ago, but this one just arrived very late. The other ones were shown in previous uh, in the mail uh, video. I now have a bunch of these uh, USB extensions which can come in handy for situations like when you don't want to reach behind the uh, main um, TV in your living room, which and all of these modern TVs have their USB ports uh, buried deep uh, on the back of them and when you have the TV attached to a wall it's really difficult to reach those ports so you can extend one of those towards the edge of the TV with one of these. Or for example when you have like a USB uh, power station like the Blitzwolf which I reviewed in the previous video uh, it's useful to, to plug a couple of these extensions to load test all of those uh, USB outputs at the same time. Same as always, you'll find links for all of these items in the description below the video. And here is another really uh, interesting item uh, that can be useful for wall-mounted TVs or other uh, similar equipment. This is a CAT6 uh, flat patch cable. But the nice thing about these is that you can order them in, in a bunch of varieties, having these uh, 90 degrees angles uh, bent one way or the other so if you pay attention to how the ports on your equipment are oriented you can pretty much order one of these in a specific length you need with a specific orientation of these plugs so this can go uh, really nice behind your TV to maybe connect your TV via eth Ethernet to a, um, a wall uh, socket and, and that way you can have some really nice cable management so and there won't be like any uh, funny angles that put a lot of stress on the uh, wiring. Next up I got a couple of these uh, CAT7 rated RJ45 termination connectors which are basically intended for field use and by that you understand something that an operator can install at the uh, end of a CAT7 cable without requiring like additional uh, equipment like a patch panel because as you may know cat 6a and upwards uh, cables like cat 7 have thicker wires inside which don't fit inside the standard uh, plastic rj45 connectors and you can't use those with the standard crimping tools uh, they typically are terminated through some type of patch panel uh, and then you have uh, patch cords to plug into the equipment but with this type of connector which is uh, uh, you know, designed specifically for that you can crimp those uh, CAT7 wires directly in here uh, without using any special tools and you can get up to 10 gigabits per uh, second speeds uh, with uh, these ones they are rated for 10 gigabits and that's pretty nice and even though I got these uh, from China uh, it really seems like this company is is quite professional I mean starting from the packaging they, they have these uh, easily uh, rip uh, seams on their packaging and I've only seen this from like good quality German manufacturers but here it is on this uh, Chinese made connector and it just seems to have a bunch of uh, specs and model number that uh, you can reference so yeah I really like the the quality of these and they should come in very handy. Next up I ordered uh, some of these uh, BNC protective caps. Uh, this type is uh, all metal and they will go on my oscilloscope 
and these are some plastic ones which I'll probably use on some other equipment that I have and uh, uses BNC uh, ports. And they can be really useful to protect those connectors from dust and general uh, ge and generally extending their uh, life very cheap simple and effective next i got a couple of uh, connectors uh, that i used up recently these are sma uh, female and i also have a male variant in here uh, these are through hole pcb connectors and i use these on my prototypes where i have a radio link and i have something anywhere up to 2.4 gigahertz I use these for prototyping uh, purposes, uh, mostly because the gold plating on these AliExpress connectors is really, really thin and rubs off after a rather low number of uses. But, you know, good enough for prototyping work. Next up, I've always wanted to try this type of um, cable ties, but they were never available at the local hardware stores here. And they have this uh, solid anchoring base with the double-sided tape and Sure, the quality of this double-sided tape is questionable considering these were, brought, these were bought from AliExpress, but you could always use some genuine 3M pads if you wanted to. And the nice thing about these is that when compared to a regular zip tie, which is like a single-use item, uh, these can be locked and uh, unlocked multiple times through the mechanism they use here. So they're kind of reusable, they can be um, really useful uh, in like a networking gear cabinet at home where you might change a, a thing or two from time to time. You can just open up this, uh, this uh, zip tie and just insert another cable when you need to. And also on the cable management category, I bought this spiral wrapping sleeve, which I think I might use for my home networking cabinet. I have a few CAT7 wires coming into my cabinet and I'm not sure if I should just leave them as they are right now which is like held together with a bunch of zip ties or improve things to make it more visibly pleasant. I'm, I'm not sure. Have you used something like this? Let me know in the comments below. Next up I have an interesting sensor here. So at home I use a bunch of Xiaomi Akara temperature and humidity sensors which are Zigbee based. They're great, really small units, they look stylish, they have very good accuracy long battery life, everything is great about them except the cost. They sell for about $16 a piece on AliExpress and recently I've been thinking about expanding my sensor network and opening uh, one of these up reveals that it is based on a Tuya integrated Zigbee module so that's how they can get the cost uh, so low by manufacturing them in very high quantity and by using cheap injection molded enclosures and cheap packaging. I'm fine with that because now I have one of these running outside and it would probably be interesting to look at it 12 months later to see how the weather affects the electronics because I live in a pretty salty environment close to the sea. Until then, check out the link to this in the description below the video. Next up I got myself one of these uh, mouth mounts for a GoPro camera and I've started doing some kite surfing activities recently and I saw some of the guys uh, prefer this style of uh, camera mostly because of the perspective the camera gives when it's at your face level and because you also get the benefit of the natural human head stabilization so it results in a very smooth uh, video. I haven't tried this yet uh, it, it feels like some decent soft rubber in here uh, but I would love some feedback in the comments below if you guys are using uh, anything like this uh, let me know uh, how that feels like in the description below it seems like they include this uh, piece of uh, foam which might help with flotation but I'm not really sure how you're supposed to uh, attach this to, to the camera as a uh, separate item I have also ordered uh, one of those like foam uh, paddings that go over the GoPro to uh, keep it floating when you drop it in the water. Next here is a very interesting item. These are some magnetic pegs that have a metal thread on the other end uh, and there are different thread sizes and different heights for this that you can get so you can use these practically to attach PCBs magnetically to some metal surface and not just PCBs anything you would like. I thought that's a pretty cool way to attach things and I think there could be many uses uh, for something like this so you'll find the link to these in the description below. And the last item in today's video which is already getting pretty long uh, is this uh, Bluetooth low energy iBeacon style uh, development board and I guess you could call this a development board 
even though maybe it was not intended as one, but this is based on the Nordic NRF51822 BLE chip and it uses one of those uh, slightly uh, bigger CR2477 batteries. They show a screen capture of the Gerber files on the AliExpress product description page. There are a bunch of uh, test points on here uh, which are labeled on their drawings. Uh, these include JTAG access and a couple of GPIOs so you could potentially maybe attach some external I2C sensor to uh, this board. Uh, we also get a switch and a status LED but that's pretty much all uh, you get on this board. I figured this could uh, successfully be used as a dev board for this chip and the nice thing is that I got this for about $11 shipped including uh, this nice enclosure. I'm guessing there is some kind of OEM service behind these products, uh, someone that can actually customize uh, this design according to your needs and uh, maybe manufacture it in volume. That was all for today. I hope it was interesting to watch and let me know in the comments below if you ordered any of these items shown today. Same as always, links for all of the products shown in this video will be placed in the description below, so do check them out. Also on screen, you'll see a playlist with all of my previous uh, mailbag videos if you're in for some binge watching. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month or you can simply hit that like button which is free but helps a lot. I'll be seeing you next week.